You're listening to At Eye Level on the Big Papa Network. I'm Matt G, and this week Dan Pettigrew returns to the show to talk about the 91.7 Teen Day Broadcasting Program in Fort Atkinson, Wisconsin. We're also going to hear from some of the program's participants and some sponsors. To join in the conversation, call 714-459-3941 or use the chat room. We want to hear from you at eye level. The Teen Day Broadcasting Program on the Big Papa Network. And welcome to At Eye Level on the Big Papa Network, brought to you by BigPapaOnline.com. It's all in there. I'm Matt G., the mad scientist behind this crazy experiment. I'm the fat kid with glasses everybody knew growing up. A middle-of-the-road, middle-aged, middle-class, middle child. A 43-year-old work in progress. Here at Eye Level, we like to see the world through the eyes of the people living in it. Not the obnoxious celebrities or the people who love them. Not the trust fund babies pretending to care about something for a tax write-off. And most certainly, not the echo chamber bobbleheads spewing out talking points given to them by their corporate masters. We're just everyday people living everyday lives. We don't want to change the world. We just want to talk. We just want to sit down and have a real conversation from the people's perspective, the people on the ground, the people at eye level. You want that other stuff? Go watch cable TV, listen to AM radio, or go to just about any other website on the Internet. You'll find plenty of it there, just not here. The number to call is 714-459-3941. That's 714-459-3941. You can also call in via Skype. Just click on the little S-shaped symbol right there next to the phone number. Um, Keeping an eye on the chat room. So if you're uh, unable to call in, you can always let your keyboard do the talking for you, too. Okay, tough guy? Cool. Uh, If you want to, you can email the show at feedback at bigpapaonline.com or follow the show on Facebook, facebook.com slash Big Papa Online, or follow us on the Twitter by using the hashtag at iLevel. Today, the rules have changed a bit in the interest of audience awareness. It's still okay to disagree. It's still okay to argue, but it's not okay to use seven dirty words. There will be young teenagers participating in this program, so let's keep it civil, and set a good example for these young people by acting like the adults we claim to be. All I ask is that you be honest original, and don't hate. Today we're talking about the 91.7 The Edge Teen Day Broadcasting Program, which is going to be in Fort Atkinson, Wisconsin, starting in uh, September, actually September 5th. And I want to bring on the uh, the founder and uh, the guy, the brains behind the operation here, uh, Dan, Dan Pettigrew. How's it going, Dan? Good afternoon. I'm doing fine. Thanks for bringing this on the air and let us talk about this thing. Sure. It's been in the works Absolutely. for a while, hasn't it? <laughs> Oh yeah, no, definitely, and and I got to tell you, it's, it's now's now's a good time uh, to to bring this on because you know, like I, I was talking earlier about the new audience, uh, the show going on to uh, to iTunes, and with the uh, increase in downloads coming through Blog Talk Radio, and now pretty soon we're going to be you know syndicated on the uh, on the No Agenda stream. Uh, you know, I think you're coming in at a good time to uh, to, to really get the word out there for it. Um, but uh, before before we get into it though, I just I wanted to take mm-hmm. a few minutes just to give a little bit of a backstory for this new audience that that's coming on board, um, how we came to know one another. Uh, we were originally we were introduced by uh, Rodney Allen Rippey. Um, of course, mm-hmm. anybody at the age of forty knows who Rodney is, <laughs> the uh, child actor from the Jack in the Box commercials, among millions of other things. Um, and Dan's been bringing uh, guests on some great guests on the show ever since. Um, and you know, Dan, as much as you've contributed to the show, you always sent seem to use your airtime when you're uh, helping or promoting other people. You never really talk about yourself. So with that said, I'd like to give you just a little bit of an opportunity to tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, okay. Uh, well, I I come from broadcast, basically. Um, I've worked radio, TV, and cable over the years, and I kind of just I kind of finally got settled in radio and um, uh, was able to be part of the L.A. Dodgers broadcast for a while, and Clippers and used to like football and basketball and, and just other things over at um, it was Fox Sports 1150 in Los Angeles and now it's now everything's over in 570 AM which is still Clear Channel so I've got a I got a little bit of experience uh, you know in music broadcasting sports broadcasting you know public radio and you know just sorts and stuff so I figured you know one day I was doing you know doing the Dodger logs over at Burbank and 
I kept thinking, it's like, what are these teenagers doing right now? I mean, it was like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm looking, trying to get the Dodgers log, Dodger logs done for the next day and for, for, you know, the games and stuff. And I kept thinking, it's like, what are the children doing right now? What are teenagers doing? They're getting out of school right now. And for probably about eight or nine months, it kept, kept nibbing on me. And then eventually I said, okay, let me see if I can put something together and for like a community-based program that, that teaches or gets involved with broadcasting. And this has been in... I've been Dolphin on doing this now for been trying to find something, you know, at this caliber for, I guess, the last 10 years or so. And, you know, I've, I've, I was able to come out here in Wisconsin for a while and, and kind of uh, just get a feel out here of what's going on in this area. And before I know it, I was talking to the, the Daily Union out here at the newspaper, that uh, Christine Spanner with the ed- managing editor, and I went through a couple of uh, leads that she gave me, and then we popped up with this college station over at White- University of Wisconsin, White Ward Campus. And we started talking to the general manager over there, and, and we started seeing a match. We started seeing all the pieces come together, and, and all the experience and all the training that I got from Clear Channel and all the other broadcast companies I worked for, it started clicking, started connecting. And, you know, and, was, and then working with, with Ronnie or Rip Marketing Group with some of the marketing projects he's got going on, it was all kind of, it was all being stirred up in the pot, and I can start seeing everything start coming in, into play here. And uh, this is pretty much this um, uh, this 91.7 FM, the Edge teenage broadcasting program is pretty much a culmination of all my broadcast experience and brought into an educational environment. It's not really, we really can't really call it a, a classroom training program. It just, we're, we're basically going to show you how to do what, what, what kind of workings, what kind of workload that you're going to be able to expect when you get into a broadcast environment. I was asking them, um, uh, Michelle, uh, over at the Wisconsin Broadcast Association, because you would qualify to be part a member of the broadcast association like for Southern California Broadcast Association, you can become a member there because you're a broadcaster. Hmm, and I never knew that. Thing about, yeah, so because you're broadcasting, you're you I mean you're you're part of the broadcast family. The last ten, fifteen years, all the programming's being you know pushed toward internet, and in the, in the broadcast associations, they're the ones they're like you know like um you have a, a chamber of commerce that oversees the businesses of a city. The broadcast associations oversee and represent broadcast companies. So if you go to Southern California Broadcast Association, you know Mary Mary Beth Garber is the president. You could you literally could become a member because you're part of the Southern California Broadcast community. Every state, every region has a broadcast association. You're our actual first radio interview. It's all going internet. And and, and my only hope is that that with programs like like the Teen Day uh, broadcast program and you know with what I'm trying to do here is that we can teach these young people to properly harness the power that this, that the internet has. I mean, yeah, sure, right. you know everybody knows about the internet. It's a great way to you know to bully someone or to, or you know to find out about you know when there's a flash mob going on. But here's also exactly. you know here, here's a way that you can express yourself in a positive way. You know mm-hmm. that you can you right. can get on the radio and you can speak your mind. You can say your piece. You can have your own show, your own forum. You know your own bully pulpit, as it were, and mm-hmm. have people call in and come, you know, converse with them and discuss right. different ideas, and basically just right. do what we're doing here. And I invite mm-hmm. any of the young folks who want to come onto this show. I mean, I have two hours a day, seven days a week that I need to fill on this network. So, That's great. <laughs> anybody wants you to do a show, you're more than welcome. Well, hopefully, mm-hmm. we'll have uh, Mariah Hadler call in later. She's the marketing director over at Busy Barnes Adventure Farm, so we'll get, be able to get a little bit more uh, information about that. But uh, right. is there, okay. we, we have a couple of callers that have uh, that have been on hold for uh, for a few minutes. Uh, Doc, who do we have? Who do we have on hold, Doc? Uh, well, I think the first line is Amanda. Amanda, are you there? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, so I'm going to be a freshman this year at Jefferson High School. I like music and the color purple, and I like writing. Oh, very good. So, what got you? Um, what got you interested in the Teen Day broadcast program? Um, actually, I heard it from my best one of my best friends' mom, because where I live, I don't get the paper out here. Mm-hmm. And I, I've always been interested in like radio broadcasting because I like talking and I like music and I like talking about music and all that stuff. Sure. So, um, do you uh, one day hope to maybe become a radio DJ or? Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> Cool. So, would you host like a music show or a talk show like this, or what do you think you would do if you? Uh... Um, probably a music show. I like, yeah, that's up my alley. Very cool. What kind of music do you like to listen to mostly? I listen to everything, but um, my favorite genre is pop. Pop. Okay. So, if you had the opportunity yeah. to uh, work at a radio station, say like the Edge, that that would definitely be something you like because they play music there. So, I think that you would um, yeah. do pretty well there, huh? Yeah. Have you ever done anything like this before? Um, 
Well, I won a contest once, but that, that's it. What was that like? Uh, it was crazy. I had to sing on the radio to get the tickets. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. So, okay, but we're going to... went on the wrong day. You went on the wrong day at the concert? Yeah, so I missed the concert. <laughs> well, hopefully you can uh, turn it around and flip the script, and then you can be the one who's giving the concert tickets out pretty soon. Yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Very cool, very cool. All right, I think we've resolved the uh, sound issue here. I think it's in the background over at Alexandra's because I've had her muted for a while and I haven't heard that echo. So, uh, Alexandra and Amanda, are you, are you still with us? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, sounds like we've fixed all the problems. <laughs> okay, Dan, so uh, I see here that the program is going to be in uh, in four different segments with a, with a bonus at the end. Um, so maybe you can uh, kind of give the, give the ladies a little bit of a preview as to what they, what they can expect in this program uh, coming up this fall. Well, segment, segment one is me pretty much working on preparing for the Busy Barnes broadcast, which will be an educational broadcast. That will be segment number one. And then se- segment two will be preparing and getting prepared for the Searching for Seas. It's a band in the University of Wisconsin-Whitewater area. They have a CD, and we're going to have them come in and do interviews with the, with the band members and have them perform a couple of songs live. And then um, in the third segment will be um, a... Uh, we'll be doing a tribute to the University of Wisconsin Whitewater ROG cadets for uh, Veterans Day weekend. We're going to bring some cadets over and do a whole Veterans Day tribute and honoring some of the local vets here. We're trying to get a hold of them, uh, get back from the American Legion here in town and, and to go get some actual local vets that are veterans from the foreign wars and veterans from uh, that are from the Navy and the Air Force, the Marines and the Armed Services, you know, and the, the, the Army and uh, the branch the armed branches and things, and just do a nice tribute and do a whole um, uh, commemorating and, and uh, appreciation, uh, you know, event that will be part of the, the Veterans Day weekend uh, would be an educational assignment. And then the final segment would be getting prepared for and uh, uh, getting ready to do a basketball game. The boys, varsity boys basketball, versus, it would be the Fort Exxon versus Milton basketball game in, in December. That's going to be the big one. I mean, we're all going to push up there. We're going to try and do actually play-by-play. Um, a broadcast doing a uh, basketball game. If if you listen, if you go, if, if you listen to the Milwaukee um, Milwaukee Bucks or the, the Los Angeles Lakers or the LA Clippers or Utah Jazz, we're going to try and do is do a smaller version of a, a radio broadcast of a, of a professional basketball game. That's the goal. Uh, Amanda said that she wants to work on being a, a announcer, and I'm not sure. Um, Alexandria, what is the what, what is the one of your specialties? What's your preference on what you want to learn? From the from the the, the the teen day program behind the scenes. Okay, like, could you be a little more specific? <laughs> <laughs> I I don't really know right now. Mm. Um, I you get a little nervous when you have to perform, I guess, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, even though, uh, Alexandra, you said before you don't really like to, to, you know, to talk on the radio as much, so you'd like to do something behind the scenes. Believe me, there are plenty of opportunities for you mm-hmm. to, um, to work, to work right. behind the scenes, and there's a lot of things that you can learn, uh, learn from this experience. So I, I hope yeah. that you're uh, really looking forward to it and that you get a lot from it. Yeah, I'm really excited. Great. Great. And then we have some wonderful sponsors come up and, you know, some of the sponsorship team members come up with opportunities incorporated with the DPS program and, and Rock River Lanes. I mean, it just we're starting to see businesses starting to come in and start just really, really providing um, some more of the, the tangible and practical support to make this happen. Amanda and Alexandra, do you have any questions you want to ask Matt or Doc Savage? Oh, are, are, are there any questions you'd like to ask them? Sure. Okay. I, I have one. Go ahead. Okay, um, what's it like to know that people are listening to you? Like, do you get nervous and stuff, or is it like butterflies in your stomach, excited? Not in the Uh, least. (laughs) Uh, Also, that having been a musician for a long time, you you originally it gets scary, and every time you go out there, at least not not the radio, but when you go out on stage in front of people and you're facing them, it's scary every time. You got butterflies in your stomach, you tighten up, you don't know if you're going to do it right. But once you start getting out there and you start, you know, treading water and you see that everything's going okay, you know, maybe nobody's applauding or anything, but nobody's angry at you and nobody's walking out the door. <laughs> it's like, hey, you know what? I, I'm really enjoying this. And then it just, after a bit, you sort of come alive. And it's, there's like nothing like it. You, you actually yeah. feel, uh, I can't speak for the radio being the same way, even though I love it. But, you know, there's, if you're out there on a the stage in front of somebody, whether you're acting or you're doing music or whatever, uh, 
you get this kind of electric fire that runs through you that just you know your whole your skin tingles and you feel you feel it inside there's a warmth and it's just you know you're doing the right thing you know you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and when people actually appreciate it you know when they're not going oh my god that was terrible making fun of you <laughs> you're like wow, that was really you know it's it's something that like wow this is fantastic and, and you want to go back and do it again almost immediately so yeah he's right you know Yep, he's totally right. And, and it is kind of the same way for radio, too. I mean, I, I started doing radio. Actually, well, Doc and I started doing, like, fake radio back in, in uh, the late 80s, and like I yeah. said earlier on the show, you know, recording stuff on, on, onto our boom boxes, onto cassette tapes. Uh, and then I, I got onto the radio a few years later in college in the early 90s. And, um, you know, I, I didn't really think much of it then because, I, you know, I played a lot of music and I didn't really do much uh, DJing. And, but then after a while, it really, I started getting into it, and I didn't really think much about it. But I, I have to admit that this last time around has probably been the most nerve-wracking for me because, um, you know, when I started doing the show, I wasn't exactly sure where it was going to go, what was going to happen with it. And I was aware of the fact that, yeah, the whole world is listening. And, you know, there's the expression, the Internet is written in ink. Which means you know, pretty much once it's out there, there's no pulling it back. So I'll admit I was nervous. And my first few shows, if you listen to them, you can tell that they have all scripted. And then I'm reading through about 90% of it. But you know, like Doc said, once you kind of get into a groove and you realize that people don't don't hate you and and you're not going to die from it, you kind of get over it and you get you get more and more comfortable. And um, and there's a lot to be said for not practicing too much because when you over practice something, you go out there, you're going to screw it up. There's no question. Yeah. Or it <laughs> sounds practiced. You know, Nine times out of ten, okay. what we're doing here is shooting from the hip, and it's totally improvised on the spot. And yep. that's also the way I like to play my music if I've got the right people behind me. And you have the potential to really fall flat on your face. But on the other hand, you have the potential to make something really special and unique that's never been around before and never will be again. And it's it's a very electric connection between you and whoever's listening, whether you know the audience is there, as in like a live performance, or you don't, as in the case of this, because – you know, that's it. Once you put it out there, you can't take it back. So it's, yep. you know, there's an exhilaration to that that isn't there if you're going by a script, if you're going by something that's very over-rehearsed. That's true. And also, yeah. as as we, uh, you know, over the last few months started looking at the stats on the on the back end, seeing how the download numbers have been, you know, just steadily increasing every week, going up and up and up, it's like, wow, people are listening, and wow, more people are listening, and wow, cool. So you almost kind of right. feel an obligation. It's like, well, I've got to be out here, and I've got to do a good show. I don't have time to be nervous and worry. People right. are counting on me. The show must go on. You know? What I'm saying is, is you're building a confidence level. You got, you're, you're, you're confident in what you're doing, right? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. See, that's, yeah. a, that's what teenagers do is helping them build confidence in their skills. That's exactly you nailed it. It's helping them, giving them a practice environment where they can get into a, where it's professional, professional programming going on, but give them some practice to get their skills up where they can feel confident in them. That's okay. true. Having been a teenager in my heart for my entire life, uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I can totally identify with where you're probably still at, obviously, which is this whole thing of I'm not good enough, I'm not perfect enough, people are looking at me, oh, my God, what if I mess up? You got to kind of drop that. I know it's easier to say than do, but yeah. you got to kind of accept that. You know, and it happens by doing, and then you know, having a recording or something of it, and then going back and hearing it for yourself. And right. the first time you're like, ah, that isn't that great. You know, I'm embarrassed by it. But after a while, you go back and like, you know what? This was good, and this was good. Okay, the, the middle parts didn't work so well, but you know, I can do this. I can do more of the things that worked, and I'll do less of the things that didn't work. And eventually, you're just going to get to a point, and hopefully sooner than later where you get this kind of confidence where it's like, well, you know what? I can handle this. It doesn't matter. So yeah, I screw right. the deal, you know. And just just remember, even though certain people, you know, that you see nowadays in the media who seem like they're just an overnight success that just kind of came out of nowhere, even those yeah. people worked at it for a long time. There is no such thing as as instant celebrity, even now in the days of, you know, Twitter and TMZ and all that stuff. It still takes effort to, you know, to, to, to hone your craft and to get your skill. I mean, to, when you apply it to anything, you know, whether it's acting ability, celebrity, you know, whether you can play baseball or basketball or football and everything, it's, you know, you've got to basically practice the fundamentals and get good at it and become confident with it and then you just you let your talent take over from there you know i don't want to say arrogance but you know this culture of everything i do is perfect because that's you know that's out there nowadays and it's a little too much it's a little hard to take sometimes but you've also got to there's something that's be said for just saying you know what i don't care about the haters you know they can say what they want the bottom line is they're sitting they're like what we my father's called ballroom politicians they're sitting in the back doing nothing and making fun of you or whoever else is doing something and that's because they are scared to do it themselves. 
so that it's easier to sit in the back and criticize than it is to get out there and do something. And, you know, you got to realize that the more people will like what you're doing and maybe influenced by you than those people that got the big mouths that are complaining about it. You know, that down the road where you can't see right now, you're going to realize that what you're doing is much more important than anything that anybody's just going to sit there and complain and criticize could ever come out with because they're not going to come out with anything. Well, it's like that quote, um, hated by few, loved by many. Yeah, very true. That's true. And it's hard to keep your eyes on that, but you have to. You have to really kind of look into yourself and be comfortable with what you're doing and say, you know what? It's almost like uh, Lemmy said from Motorhead, you know, raise up the flagpole and see who salutes. You know, mm-hmm. just do what you got to do. Do what your heart tells you is right. And, you know, if people are criticizing it, don't worry about it, you know? It, it's like uh, Cherie Curry in uh, the, the Runaways movie, you know, in the beginning when she goes out on stage doing the Bowie thing and everybody's making fun of her. So what? You know, a year or two later, she's out there front in a band that we're still talking about. So, exactly. you know... You can't let little things like that get to you. Amanda and, and Alexandra, I look at it this way. You two are going to help be role models for other teenagers across the United States with what yeah. you're doing. That's really this is what you're, you're This is what's great. This is nice. This, you have the, I'm, just, I'm just loving this. You guys have an opportunity to be role models to other teenagers across the U.S. by what you're doing. First the U.S., then the world. Yeah, exactly. Talk about right. pressure. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, really. <laughs> no, just, just, you know, you're you're, you're going to do fine. I mean, you literally, you're going to do great. Just be natural and just just be yourselves and just learn your craft. I mean, just just enjoy just getting de- developing your skills. I mean, that's what that's what we did. I mean, I, that's how I got through a broadcast career. I really, I didn't, I had no idea um, that I'd be working for the Dodgers one day. I mean, I I had Kiss FM in Los Angeles um, calling me. I was I was working for a classical radio station in Los Angeles. I had Kiss FM, Rick Dees and Ryan Seacrest, the morning shows. They were calling me, saying, "Come work for us." Where, where they were they were doing Kiss FM AM, Kiss FM, uh, Kiss FM FM, Kiss FM AM. They were taking the AM station and were going to put over to, to sports. I did a little sports programming back, you know, some years before. But I was working at a classical radio station, you know, classical music, you know, Bo Mozart or Beethoven, you know. I, you know, it's like, here's, you know, one of the biggest radio stations in the United States calling me up saying, we want you to come over. We're planning on putting together a sports format on their AIM station. It's like, don't bother me. Have fun. I, for about four or five months, they kept calling me. He said, come. And I, one day I talked to my, my manager. And I said, you went, Kim? I said, I'm going to go over to Burbank and go to this, you know, go talk to these guys. I had put up three questions in my mind. So if they say yes to these questions, I'll take, I'll come over and take the work. And I met with uh, the manager of the traffic department. I went from there and met, we met with the manager of the sales department. And from there, I met the general manager, Roy Laughlin. I mean, he was like the top guy. He was just absolutely incredible. I mean, I just, they were great staff over there. When I came back to my job for, in, in the classical radio station, I said, Kim, you know what? I got to take this job. I wasn't just doing the, the Los Angeles Dodgers English broadcast commercial logs. They threw me the Spanish version, too. We were doing the Dodgers games in two languages, which I didn't find out until later in the spring training. I'm like, this is crazy. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, literally, you get confident with your skills, and then you can start growing in those things and start, wow, this is amazing. And they get into the broadcast industry. Maybe there may be days where you're like, this is kind of hard, but it's so fulfilling and satisfying. You just, it, it is one of the best industries to get into it and get a career, isn't it? My biggest it advice is. right now, I mean, this isn't where I was back when, it held me back a lot, is just you go for it. Just jump in head first. Don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. if you have any skills and any drive, it's going to work out. And that's the way I approach music, and that's the way I approach the radio. And you know what? Nine times out of ten, it does. Sometimes you fall flat on your face, but so what? You pick yourself up, you get right back on moving. And you, the scary part is, and you learn, I learned this with music first, when you hit a bunch of blue notes, you go out of key, and you're like, oh, my God, that was horrible. People don't even notice. They think you did it on purpose. <laughs> well, that's great what you did there. I'm like, what? <laughs> okay, yeah, that was okay. yeah you never know what people are going to like or not like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was all planned. Yeah, right. yeah. Don't I meant to do that. The Pee Wee Herman defense. <laughs> you can think yourself out of walking out of the door in the morning. So don't do it. Just and do I've it. done it. So. <laughs> yeah, me too. There's, there's, there's nobody that's gotten into I mean, no, no matter what career it is, we've all made mistakes. Oh, yeah. We've all done it. Definitely. Yeah, mistakes are basically an opportunity to learn, to learn better. And exactly. I guess 
if you could learn anything, you know, learn from other people's mistakes, the mistakes of those who came before you. I mean, that's kind of how I learned not to do things by watching, you know, my parents, my aunts and uncles and everybody screw up. So, you know, it's like, okay, you screwed that up. You know what? I'm not going to do that that way. So. <laughs> my approach is I've seen so many people mess up in different ways. And I'm like, well, I can't be any worse. Yeah. <laughs> that too, that too. All right, we're yeah. going to take a real quick yeah. break because I want to get to uh, Christine Spangler from the uh, Jefferson County Daily Union oh, editor. She's, uh, she's on the uh, on hold. So we're going to take a quick Great. break, and we're going to play a little bit of what uh, um, Alexandra and Amanda have coming up for them, a little bit of a spot from the Busy Barnes Adventure Farm. <laughs> Bring your kids to Busy Barnes Adventure Farm Family Media Day, Saturday, September 29th from 10 to 6. Make plans to spend the day on the farm as you interact with the animals, conquer the trivia corn maze, and go on a hayride. For details, visit BusyBarnsFarm.com. Celebrate the season and help us support the annual Ford Atkinson SFA Alumni Fundraiser, sponsored by Jones Dairy Farm. We are growing memories and harvesting family fun at Busy Barnes Adventure Farm, located on Highway 12, just west of Ford Atkinson. Visit BusyBarnsFarm.com. And we're back at eye level on the Big Papa Network. I'm Matt G, and we're talking today at 81.7, the Edge Teen Day Broadcasting Center with uh, Dan Pettigrew, Alexandra Scullin, Amanda Gilbert, and, of course, Doc Savage. And now I want to bring on the managing editor of the Jefferson County Daily Union, Christine Spangler. Christine, you are at eye level. Hello. Nice to How be here. How are you today? Not so bad. I'm still at work here, working away on tomorrow's paper, but I was tuned in to listen, and I thought, well, I cannot stay silent any longer because you guys sound so good. And oh, in fact, excellent. our young ladies, I'm looking forward to working with them because uh, you guys are great on Internet radio, and you guys are going to be great on okay. on the edge. You, you, No problem there. Yeah, you so, hear that girl's a rallying endorsement. I'm a print journalist because I, you know, that's why I'm not in broadcast because you know, ah, but uh, <laughs> that's why I stay behind the words. But uh, you guys sound great. Well, there you go. See, thanks so much, Christine. <laughs> so, um, tell us a little bit about how you uh, you came to uh, to meet Dan and got involved with the uh, with the whole program. Well, as you probably have guessed, Dan's a very enthusiastic guy, and he came in, and I don't know how we were talking one day, Dan, but you were in town and. And we were talking about um, putting together maybe something for um, the 175th anniversary of Fort Atkinson. And, right. And that was last year. And and then it never kind of came to fruition. Things kind of, you know, it was just busy. And, and we were going to do some some uh, broadcast-type things with historical topic. Well, you know, time goes by. It was really busy here, too, and he was busy. So, you know, he popped in again in this year, and uh, we decided, well, you know, maybe we'll do something on a small scale uh, just to, with other topics, maybe a little history, this or that. Well, once Dan gets going on something, it just like just takes off. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I sat and did nothing, and he just did everything. So, you know, whatever, no matter what he says, he is amazing. And and so he just started to, to get going. And of course, um, once we met with Kyle and and Dan and I, and I, I started to see all the equipment that you know uh, that Dan has, and the knowledge that he has, and and the and, the, and Kyle and the the station over there in Whitewater, you know, like I said, I'm, an, I'm the print side of this, and so I can kind of sit back and write about it, but um, the, the, the broadcast teaching is going to be these guys, you know, and, and I will be, um, I'll be more onto the other side of it, trying to help with questions and, you know, writing things about it, and then helping the, the students, you know, prepare questions and, and interviewing skills and stuff, but um, the more I watched them, the more I got excited about it, and I thought, gee, this this actually can work. So, Excellent. so right now we still have some openings, and I'm hoping that our young ladies here uh, maybe can spread the word, get some more friends, maybe, um, as well as well, yeah, text to everybody about this. No, All right, great. text. <laughs> well, this this just shows you how old I am. So, <laughs> texting everybody, I can't. I have a track phone, and you know this is pitiful, and I don't text. <laughs> But that's Text, okay, my mom tweet, Facebook, just blog, Pinterest, everything. <laughs> oh, God, Pinterest. Well, you should have put it on that. Pinterest, too, Mom. There, see? <laughs> <laughs> you put it on Facebook, too. Everyone knows. Uh, excellent. I'm going to start to sound like my father a little bit. Uh, these kids today, they got all these things I don't know anything about. I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. We just started our, <laughs> about a year ago, started our Facebook page, the paper, and it's just like, it's exciting. But now, yeah, the Pinterest thing, I still don't quite get it. <laughs> so maybe the girls can teach me. Uh, some I of never the, got it. Some of the things. Uh, I don't know, but we'll 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 figure it out. But uh, sure. yeah, so I'm looking forward to um, seeing what they can teach me, because um, sure. I'm not up on broadcasting myself. Um, but 
it, and it's, actually, it's you know, news um, and journalism is journalism. <laughs> Actually, you know, even even as a sidebar, ladies, uh, you know, uh, uh, more and more companies are starting to actually create positions for people to, to do social media and social networking. So basically, you could essentially get a job making a living tweeting and Facebooking and pinning things on Pinterest and Tumblr and Reddit and all those other types of things. So there, there's something else you can get involved in as well. You know, mm-hmm. even right. newspapers, you know, now that we're into the whole digital age and we have our e-editions and, and Facebook, et cetera, et cetera, um, the bigger papers um, – we don't have any money here for that, but the, the bigger papers, you know, they have their their media social media editors. These people, I mean, and a lot of the radio stations and stuff are they're getting to do more of that. And those people are, are, you know, so you can do your broadcasting. They do podcasts, all these things, and take care of it. Plus, um, uh, you know, interact or put everything together. You know, uh, so like we do some podcasts and stuff here. Well, we just the reporters, we just do it ourselves. Um, as little as we know. Again, this is our broadcast, you know, our introduction to broadcast. Sure. Uh, being on a podcast, which is, yeah, you, trust me, you do not want me to be on a podcast. But um, Well, you're doing fine so maybe, far. Maybe after this. Uh, I'm just blabbing. Yeah, you're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ladies. All right. Well, but, yeah, it's um. It's it's a whole different world, and and we're fine in journalism and newspapers. You know this whole broadcast thing, which is really what the internet, radio, and internet in general is broadcast, in my view. Um, you know, it's getting out there in a different medium, uh, and uh, it's it's a whole different world. So who knows what kind of job opportunities are down there? It's not just radio or TV and broadcast now. It's it's right. the podcast and the social media Certainly. and the tweetings and the you know tweetings. I don't even know if that's a word. Um, sure. <laughs> tweets. <laughs> and, uh, and and newspapers, and I think we're gonna all, you know, we all ha- want to survive, and we all want, we all have our different um, reasons for existing, and we all can coexist really well. And yes, uh, for us, true. for we in the newspaper industry, we we have to learn a lot about you guys because we need to. Yeah get help in the whole broadcasting ideas. So. Well, yeah, that's very true. And, and not only that, just, you know, to uh, not, not to belabor the point about, about jobs and things, but I know that I'm sure that any parents who may be listening are concerned about, you know, the economy mm-hmm. is so bad right now and, you know, the direction that it's going. Are my kids going to be able to find jobs? You know, um, mm-hmm. I, I, I speak from personal experience. My parents were completely against me getting into broadcasting and television and film. I did anyway, <laughs> regardless of that. But their main concern was, am I going to be able to make a living? Is you know, yeah. But there are many more ways than, you know, I even said it earlier on the show, many more ways than just actually speaking or performing or anything like that, that you can actually make a living doing this. There are lots of jobs out there in, in addition to all these new social media jobs that are opening up now. So, it yep. is a an employable track for for any kid to go on. So if any parents are concerned about that, you know, I just want to address those concerns. Although coming from my my knowledge of radio, and if it's anything like newspapers, you're not going to be a millionaire. But that's all. Well, right. no. Who, who, but, is? Yeah. <laughs> who is? Who is? Everybody needs a second job. I don't want to be a millionaire. <laughs> all right, great. Yep, here <laughs> you go. Yeah. Going to journalism and broadcast is just the perfect thing. Then. <laughs> That's true. I was glad to hear. Um, I think it was Alexandra say that she wanted to be on the on the um, uh, the behind the scenes part of it. Was that right. you that said that you're more interested in that than being in front of the or on the uh, broadcast side of of the show? Is that was yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. Well, that then that that I was glad to hear that because you know. That's my thing too, and so I thought, well, good. Someone's going to want to listen to something I say when I'm talking about interviewing or, or this or that. But uh, uh, we shall see how well I do. I'm not, you know, as I say, broadcast isn't my uh, specialty, but I, 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 I can, I can wing it. Sure. So. Now, will you be uh, helping them with uh, writing articles and commercials and things like that in general? Well, or? I, I have no clue. Um, I, I, uh, I, 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 commercials. Um, I've never done that. Well, I shouldn't say I've never done. That. I mean, I've done. I've been in journalism for 34 years, so you know, I can. I've done it in different ways. I've sure. not well, done copy any radio is copy, commercial. basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, copy is copy. Um, so I, I think you know, uh, I want to be a mentor and and help them with, as you said, yeah, uh, their copy. Help them, you know, give them, you know, go through how you interview as far as getting questions ready, so you're always prepared. But you know, just as I think they're learning on the show. You know, things just kind of roll. You get people talking about something, and suddenly the girls are talking about, you know, you know uh, the the texting and this and that. And suddenly it's the time's going by, and whoosh, you know, there it goes. Um, but at the first, you definitely want to have your preparation done, and I think that's yeah, where I'll be helping out with some of that. I may not be the best uh, copywriter when it comes for short copy for you know, for um, for radio. But then again, you know, I've been doing a lot of stuff through my years, so I can. I can be told that it's not sure. right, or I'll let the girls 
and, and, and the guys, we have some mail too, um, I'll let them edit my copy. Just remember, though, mansion editors don't like to be edited too much, but uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll let you edit the copy. So um, I think, yes, things are moving on, and as the students are you know, kind of showing what they're most interested in, you know, we can, we can work with that. But uh, so I, I guess, yeah, <laughs> that's, I, I think that's what my role will be doing. Who knows? I you know I I, um, I hope to have a few other um, mentors stopping in, kind of to help us out. Um, some of the people I know in the industry. Um, so you know we shall see. We shall see. Well, that's great. Well, like, you know, like I said before, copy is copy, and I guess I suppose the mechanics of it can be the same. So I, I think that that you would definitely be able to impart that 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 part of your experience onto onto it. You know, basically just to kind of help them with the fundamentals and things like that of right. just you know basic right. writing in general, and then of course you know take it from there and involving it into or or, or um, sorry evolving it into a radio broadcast. So right. I wouldn't and tell I yourself think, short. <laughs> well, we'll see. <laughs> no, I think Dan and and uh, Kyle and of course the people over at uh, the Edge. Uh, you know, they'll take what, you know, I can impart and, uh, you know, put it to the best use. So hopefully I'll have something to say. I always do. So. <laughs> really like Jim, it. she has many good things to say. Look, I mean, I just look at her articles. I mean, just blows me away. Just she, how she just, the, the articles that she put together about the, the teen day thing is just amazing. It's just incredible. <laughs> well, thank you. But and also I plug dailyunion.com for any updates, any new mm-hmm. information. That's going to be an official print site for um, for for teen day broadcasting. So yep. I'll make sure and you I bookmark that. Yep. And I understand and we'll, you'll have this on a podcast, this interview, this, this show? Is yeah, it'll be available yep. on the oh. Facebook page. Uh, it's uh, facebook.com. Oh, good. Like, My mom online. wants it. That's cool. And we're because, also... Uh, we, we're also we'll on iTunes put it on our now Facebook as well. Page too. You can also do iTunes now, right? Right, Matt? You yes. said the iTunes can download Yes, we are on iTunes. Yep. That just oh happened my God, this week. so much technology. <laughs> yes, I know. It's a beautiful thing. Before we continue, no. I want to uh, bring our next guest, Kyle Johns, who is the um, promotions director over it. at 91.7 The End, WSUW. Kyle, you are at eye level. Oh, hey. Uh, I'm, I'm so glad you guys had me on. Uh, I'm up in beautiful Wisconsin's Door County, and uh, I oh. I didn't think I'd be able to make it, and I I turned on the computer, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, eh. I level is on right now, and <laughs> and they're helping us talk about the program, and that's great. Uh, we're very excited for the program. I mean, we we've, we've been working to have something to do with the community for a long time, and this is just a great way to get out to the community and and help out. I mean, nobody, uh, not usually, I should say, uh, kids don't usually get on the air before they're 18 or before they go to college and go on college radio. So mm-hmm. I think this is a great opportunity for for students in the uh, Fort Axon area. Definitely. You know, you know, Kyle, i got to say, uh, um, you actually kind of remind me a lot of myself because, uh, you know, I started radio in, in college as well, you know, back in uh, back in the dark ages. <laughs> 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 and uh, I know that if there was a program like this involved back when I was doing it, I definitely would have uh, gotten involved in it. And I just, I just want you to know that, you know, you're, you're in a great place right now because, you know, you've just finished college. You're getting involved with programs like this. Um, so oh, Matt, basically, there's a lot of potential so cool. for you now, and anything we can do to to help you out, you know, we're here for you. Yeah, this Matt? is all about opportunity. All about opportunity. Absolutely. What was that, Dan? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Matt. Kyle is still a senior in college. Kyle, you're graduating next May, right? Is that what you're planning to graduate? Yeah, that's the plan. Got to get there. See, he's still um, a student. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> So, uh, so uh, tell us a little bit about uh, about your your own involvement with this, Kyle. What uh, what got you into radio to begin with? Well, actually, I went into college to go into advertising. Mm-hmm. And at UW Whitewater, when you want to go into advertising, you are a, a a sub part of journalism. You're journalism with an emphasis of broadcasting, or journalism with an emphasis in advertising. So. Um, I got into journalism with an emphasis on advertising, and I went into a learning community. And what those do is give you an opportunity to go throughout the whole entire journalism, uh, give you the opportunity to experience the entire journalism field. So uh, my first year in college, I got into college radio, and I didn't expect to, but I did. And I loved it because I got to go on the air with uh, with my roommate and my butt at the time, and still a still good guy, uh, D. O'Neill. And we just had a lot of fun with it, and I fell in love with it. And the next summer, I switched my major over to broadcast, and here I am. I'm I'm working my way up 
to uh, become a broadcaster here in Wisconsin. No, that's and, uh, great. The way I got the way I got into the program was I just got into the WSCW, the ninety one seven edge um e board, um, the committee because I started out in the, as news director and finally worked my way up to uh promotions. And nobody at uh nobody at the edge was thinking about anything like this. And here Dan comes in and he wants he just wants to tour the station. And he tours the station and he's talking to our to our radio manager Brian Lucas about this program. And Brian Lucas was like, That's great. Um, <laughs> and uh he he wants somebody to go into this program with Dan. And everybody at the table is like starry eyed, they still don't know what it's about. I still don't know what it's about. But I'm like, I'll call Dan and um I'll I'll figure this out and, and work with him with it. And after finding out what it was all about, I mean, I thought it was just gonna be a field trip to the station, but it turned out to be much more than that. It turned out to be a program for opportunities, uh, for teams in the Fort Atkinson area and it's it's really gonna be a, a great thing what he has set up for all these teams. That's very good. So uh what what capacity do you hope to be involved in the the program as it evolves? Well, I'm the I'm the glue. Um I I connect Dan to the station and uh, I'm just making sure the program is is where it needs to be at this time and, and make sure it gets on the air and I'm relaying the information and help helping Dan make the decisions for the program itself. So you'll be the basically the point man basically between uh Dan and, and the station. Yes. You'll be the, the go-to guy, as it were. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Uh, other than uh, driving to Fort Atkinson every now and then, I'm I'm on call uh, when it comes to this program. Very cool, very cool. So tell us a little bit about the about the history of uh, WSUW. I see here that uh, it started on the um, the campus in 1966. It started a while back. Um, we we started out after. Uh, there's a little bit of campus history here. Uh, it used to be called Old Main, or uh, it was called Main, and it, the big building that the University of Wisconsin Whitewater was at burned down, and there was only one wing or one section of the university left, and that was called Higher Hall. Well, in the 1960s, um, that that's still an ancient hall today. It's still up. In the 1960s, we moved up there. We put a we put a big uh, they got a trans transmitter on the top of Higher Hall because it's the tallest building in in the Whitewater area uh, for UW Whitewater. I think it still is. Uh, I'm not sure. There's a there's another building out there. It's a campus residence hall. Mm-hmm. Um, but we invested a lot of money into the radio station, and we put a big studio on the top of Higher Hall. Well, after uh, after a few years, uh, after, after a lot of years actually, uh, we moved. Uh, the operation down over to Anderson Library, uh, where the whole new digital age that you guys are talking about uh, moved the, the operation and, and helped make it uh, accessible from a different area of campus. And it, it's a lot easier not to climb. I don't know how many stories that was. I've never actually been up there, uh, but I think that's about uh, five stories, five, six stories to climb up in order to get to your, to your booth if you had to go up. Wow. <laughs> So uh, yeah, now we just walk in the door and uh, we're on air. Hey, I'm not even selling the edge. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you yeah, come a long way. Uh huh. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know much about the in betweens uh, for the radio station, uh, but I I know where we are today. I know what we're trying to do to become a, a better part of the community. Very cool, very cool. So now you guys are reaching out. To, let's see, you've got 1,300 watts of power, so you're out in the surrounding areas. Uh, let's see, what does it say here? That, um, like Palmyra, Fort Atkinson, East Troy, and Watertown. So you have a fairly big reach then. Yeah, we get a little bit of Milton. Uh, we don't quite get into Jamesville at the bigger city in Wisconsin, uh, but we we do get a lot of that smaller area, the farm towns. Um, I'd say Fort Atkinson and Whitewater, the, the biggest establishments in that small area. So what I was trying to do is reach out to Fort Atkinson uh, with this program because we don't do much uh, there. We never we never really did. So I think this is a great opportunity to get over there. 
So in other words, it's, it's kind of like a community that's a bit underserviced by what the more traditional, uh, you know, larger, I guess, city corporate media would uh, be uh, exposed to. So, yeah, it's, it's more of a local kind of a grassroots program that you're trying to expose to people who wouldn't ordinarily be exposed to this level of involvement in a radio program or production, rather. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we get a lot of Madison stations, but uh, we are the public station in that area. Uh, I think that's a great thing, uh, except for that AM uh, stations over there. We are we are the college um, nonprofit station, and I, I think what we do uh, is just it should be involved in the into the community. So I I think that the, the bigger the bigger media, yeah, they couldn't they couldn't put a hold on us. Uh, we we can do this because um, we are teachers ourselves, and there's teachers all around us, and we can teach these teens. Dan is a, a teacher. Um, when it comes to broadcast, and I think he'll do a great job. I, I think we can teach these teams how to or be all, all about broadcast. That's and great. Well, I hope to uh, to have the opportunity to, to uh, be a teacher to all of you as well. And, uh, you know, I had extended the invitation earlier on in the show, uh, and I'd like to also to extend it to you now, Kyle, if you ever want to participate in the show um, uh, as what we call an eye-level correspondent, if you wanted to, uh, you know, come on and uh, you know, do something with us here at the Big Papa Network. I've got two hours to fill pretty much every day, so uh, if you wanted to, if, you, if you're ready to break into uh, Internet radio here on Blog Talk, just, uh, you know, let me know, and, and we'll get you on here. Absolutely. That's a great opportunity. Great. Oh, great. Thank you. Excellent. Well, we've got a few minutes uh, to go before we wrap up. Um, girls, did you have any questions that you wanted to ask Kyle or Christine or Dan or anyone? Um, I don't have any. Yeah, neither do I. Okay. Uh, Dan, is there anything you wanted to add then real quick? I just wanted to say thank you to Rock River Lanes um, for being one of the sponsors uh, and also for Opportunities Incorporated. And just want to give you a little background on Opportunities um, they are a community rehabilitation program based in Fort Atkins, Wisconsin, with additional locations in Watertown, Madison, and Kanawha. It was established in 1966 through the grassroots vision of parents who are committed to ensuring their family members with disabilities have a place to learn, work, and achieve independence. And they, um, they've been doing, they have different programs. You go to um, uh, Opportunities, I think it's www.oppinc.com. Robin Kennedy over there, she's the uh, uh, director of agency relations and working with them. And we're it's just and they're a nonprofit too, so this whole thing is it's it's all being integrated where you start getting participation and just working with the city itself and bringing something that's gonna be really supportive to, you know, just the community to what we're doing here in Fort Axon. I just wanna thank everybody for just you know, just the help and the work and just the, the, the just the progress we're gonna make on this and just the the support we're getting is just incredible. It's just I, I'm just loving it. You know, I wanna see more. I just wanna see more. Excellent. Well, hopefully this is just the beginning and we can get to see more of these things happening in the future. Well, that's all the time we've got today. I want to thank everyone for listening. And, of course, thank you, everyone on the panel, for calling in. Thank you so much. Thank you. And, uh, no problem. Yeah, thanks. Sure. And hopefully we'll we'll uh, be able to speak to you all soon. Uh, you can find out how to get in touch with all of our guests on the Facebook page, facebook.com slash online. There will be all the information that you need to find out from there. So don't forget to tune in to Third Eye Cinema every Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. And next week, we're going to be at eye level with Sean and Tracy Williams from Love All Humans. That's at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, right here on the Big Papa Network. Have a great week, everyone. And remember, I want to hear from you. Leave comments, ask questions, post your music, art, and videos, or submit a story that affects your world on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash bigpapaonline, where you'll also find links to everything we talk about on the show, along with podcasts of the episodes. You can follow the show on Twitter by using the hashtag at eye level. You can also contact me at mattg at bigpapaonline.com, or follow me on Twitter at fatkidglasses. Tell me what you think. It's okay. I'm a big boy. I can take it. Just remember the rules. It's okay to disagree, it's okay to argue, it's even okay to use seven dirty words, just keep it civil. All I ask is that you be honest, original, and don't hate. My bouncers review everything before it gets posted, so don't bother with the spamming, the flaming, the rickrolling, or whatever that is you kids are doing today because it just doesn't make it through. For a transcript of this show, go back to the beginning and start typing really fast. And if you're just crazy enough to do it, send it in, and I just might put it on my website. At Eye Level is a production of the Big Papa Network. Visit BigPapaOnline.com for more information.